Well, I've come down to a, a little tiny uh, farm lake, about 45 minutes from home in North Yorkshire. I heard about it last year. And, uh, fancy the session on here? Bit of an unknown water, unknown stock, rough estimates between 15 to 25 carp. Uh, all high doubles, and the two that I know that have been landed are two twenties, only low twenties. But 45 minutes from home, so I'll give it a bash. So it's two, two and a half acres, there's plenty of pegs dotted about everywhere. Very silty, very weedy, very, very similar to the tontine. Uh, so I've adopted the same tactics that I used to use in the tontine. So I've gone for uh, helicopter setups. They are the critically balanced or pop up baits because there's that much weed uh, and also like heli safes as well. So I'm ejecting the lead if I do get caught in the weed, so I'm getting the rest of my gear back. But I am losing a few leads. I've got two rods on the far margin that uh, I went out with a rake yesterday, uh, spent an hour on each spot, done a lot of, ra a lot of raking out, uh, and then I put a, about four to five kilos of party over each rod. Uh, and then went back over from the bank or with a boat uh, to the spot I'd marked using uh, a bottle in the tree just so I could spot it from the side of the bank and I took the boat straight over and, and put another half a kilo uh, boiler down with a pop up over the top of it I've done that with two rods on the left hand side but nothing yet yeah so more information just on the weed situation uh, it's absolutely rammed in here, completely full of it, so your presentation is an absolute, absolute nightmare to make sure you get it just right. Not only have you got the long strand of the Canadian weed coming up over, uh, you've also got that silk weed that sits anything from an inch to three inches off the deck. So uh, I've fished, and what I'm fishing on, on all rods is helicopter setups uh, with the heli safe systems. So the lead does eject if I do get a take or if it gets rammed in the weed, which has made a hell of a difference on a few of the times when I haven't used the boat and I've cast. A lot of the waters I fish up close to home are very similar to this one. Really, really, really weedy. Uh, not only in uh, the silt patches, but just massive, massive beds of it. So you're struggling for your presentation all the time. And using them foam nuggets make a hell of a difference, whether you're casting out or you're using the bait boat especially with the helicopter style uh, so you know if it's silt bottom the lead's going to plug in and you can just put a little uh, little bead halfway up your uh, whether it's your main line or a leader or your leg core in this fight this time i'm using leg core uh, so it will run and come off uh, if you do lose the gear but it just stops the the hole of the hook link sliding right the back up but it's perfect for when you're just casting out and you know it's going to plug in a little bit so you're, you're presenting just right so I'm using the semi-stiff uh, braid hook links. I don't like them too supple. Uh, however, I do like them just to wave down and sit on top of the weed with either a pop-up or a quickly balanced bait. So it's similar presentation-wise to what you, you'd think as a chod setup. But I've got no confidence in chods, so uh, that's why I've gone with these kind of rigs. So no uh, combi links this time, uh, where I have the all bright knot from a bit of snag leader mono or fluorocarbon into a, a braided section where the hook is i've just gone all the way through with a semi stiff and just just peeled it a little back of the hook link just so it kicks out a bit as well but yeah i've used them foam nuggets to great effect uh, so i've been out with the boat as well after i've cast out with the foam nuggets on and seen the presentation uh, and literally it's you can see where the lead's gone in plugged it's laid back flat uh, and then the hook link's just drifted down after the foam is released so another plug these are the daddies, absolute daddies. Best I've used, biggest the ones I've ever used. And with them being different colours as well, they're really good to spot uh, to make sure if you're using two at a time that both can come, you know you're presented in that weed. Just perfect. Well, it's half past three in the morning. Uh, I've just been walking up to an absolute one tone off the middle rod. Uh, got out, managed to jump out the bivvy, lifted into it, had it on for about three minutes. Uh, got me weeded up in a weed bed. Uh, and then, ding! Nightmare. A lovely 18 pound mirror sat in here. Caught on there. Solar baits, candy floss. It's a little pop up, stiff hinge rig. Out 
of our secret lair. <laughs> First to catch out of it as well, you spawn you get. Nice oh. one. Nice. What a beauty. <laughs> 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 Eighteen pound bar of gold. As soon as the carp I'm biting, kept myself entertained. I've already had one, about eight and a half pounds, and then I've just had this pike, twenty-one pound, taken on a jerk bait. Just fished over the top of the weed. Twenty-one pound. The Nash is on that mate. <laughs> Hal's here. Hal's fishing on the opposite side in the corner, uh, where we came down at the weekend just to bait up. So he's he's uh, gone into them spots and uh, good on him. He's pulled out an eighteen-pound mirror. Old bruiser it was, full of battle scars. Probably older than now. But what a fish it was, absolute beautiful fish, so he's done really well there, I'm really pleased for him. But apart from me, I've done absolutely sod all, absolutely nothing, I've tried like hell with the carp. I've still got another 24 hours left, but, uh, so I've been popping about with me, me pike lures, because I've heard there's quite a few pike in here. I heard there was a 27 pounder caught last week, so I've uh, been messing about and then uh, I had a go the day before yesterday, uh, I had an eight and a half pounder. And I've just uh, put back a, a 21 pound uh, lure caught on a crankbait. So I'm pretty happy about that, it's got me chuffed. So it hasn't been all a, a disappointment. But it's the first time on the lake, we'll only be to wreck it out. But I will be back. Met a couple of good lads on here already. Uh, i give Michael a shout. He showed me a few spots. You know, I started to get a few gremlins because they just don't show at all. Uh, and he rocked up the second night we were here, so I managed to have a good uh, good chat with him. He showed me some photos, some, some good fishing here. Uh, he's been doing a lot of effort, a lot of time on this lake, so good luck to the lad. But uh, he's been putting bits and bobs in, he showed us some of his spots, which was really nice of him. Uh, and I say, Alan managed to bag one last night, half one. I'd just gone off to sleep as well, watching Game of Thrones. And then he phones, I've got one, I've got one. So good on him, good angler now, well done, son. But hopefully I can catch one and uh, stop this run of bad, bad luck I've been having with the France trip uh, and the winter sessions over at uh, the Wayne Stones. Really, really struggling this year. It wasn't my turn for bad luck, like I've had a good good run last year. But hopefully my, uh, my luck will change. I've had Al to come round and rub me rods. But we'll see, we'll see. Right Al, the pressure's on to catch a pike. This is Alan Hamidi. <laughs> 20 pound pike on this cast. Keep it on the back, he's gonna go. <laughs> Come on. You tell when it feels different than it when it catches the weed. Yeah.
Well, look what we've got here. A little double in the sling. Oh, I think it's got a 20. Well, second session on the little lake. My first fish. It's only a small one. 14 pound. Nice little common. We wouldn't normally wait to photograph it, but when you first fish from the lake, why not? Put you back. Let's see if we can get a bigger one. <laughs> How big, young man? 21. <laughs> oh my god. Got a oh, little kite on it, hasn't it? Beauty. Nice pair of shoulders. Lovely, lovely. My little 14 pound common. And Al's? 21 pound mirror, which I've got. <laughs> Busy night last night on the lake. I had five tench and a little 14 pound common. And Al's had? Nice 21 pound mirror. Nice. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Aldi coffee. Mm. It looks like a dark rich roast. Doesn't do it for me. I'll go for the yeah, uh, what tea have we got? Yorkshire. Yorkshire tea. Yeah, that'll do me. I'll have the Yorkshire tea. Uh, yeah, it's damn right. Well, it looks like it's another sleepless night. It's quarter to one. And after the escapades of last night with the six tension, the, uh, the small 14 pound common. As soon as it's got dark, uh, the swim's come alive again. And I've just put back my second tench. <laughs> I'm going to try to keep plodding through like I did last night with them, and hopefully I'll get a carp like I did yesterday. Hopefully a bit bigger though. Well, that's it. Gear's all packed out. Ready for the three barrel trip round the lake with all the gear. So a nine tench and a 14 pound common car. But uh, that one I, I lost last night did feel like a good one. I'd say it was taken in open water. Com this time completely different, different tactics. But I thought, oh well, I'll put quite a bit of bait in so I filled the hoppers full on, on the micro cat. Found a spot the deepest part of the lake, looked look through the camera, you can't see all the way down but it looked like the weed was a bit patchier. I dropped it in there and R3 this morning it absolutely rattled off one toner and I had it on for about 30 seconds uh, and it got me weeded up. So I just kept steady pressure, steady pressure uh, and I just felt let go so I hooked pull. Surprise like it was uh, a 14 mil pop up. A long shank nailer. I can only guarantee a good old gold on them, but not this time. Well, one of those are always the biggest anyway, aren't they? We'll load the barrel up and get it right the way around that field. It's Father's Day today, so I wonder what uh, my wife and the kids have got me. 